Long before the days of computer simulation, this was how cars were tested. Models, full-size clay silhouettes, and if you're Chrysler in the 60s, tapping your missile division to win some races. The fastest cars of the time were rounded and had no special tricks outside of disturbing as little air as possible. But this isn't the 60s. Hi, welcome back to the only YouTube channel uploaded by sending a VHS copy directly to YouTube headquarters. Aerodynamics can be a challenge. Here we go. Oh my God, oh my God, the Mercedes has taken off. No, that's too nice. Air is dumb and I don't like it. It's a terrible squishy liquid that rarely behaves like it should and is almost impossible to simulate in every single application. So I did the logical thing and built a wind tunnel and designed an experiment and titled the video something very strong before even getting a single drop of data. Let's start with the wind tunnel. The idea is simple, and if you want to run through it along at home, the files are in the description. But I took a tube and I made some air run through it, and I'm drawing the air through to avoid any choppy restrictions with the fan. The honeycomb design is hopefully going to stabilize it as much as possible, and the one side is removable for easy installation and access. All right, putting this all together. Uh, let's start with the Noctua fans. These are little 80 millimeter Noctua fans. They're way too good for what I'm using them for, but whatever, they were fairly cheap actually. Um, this is a weight sensor, uh, good for about a third of a gram, theoretically. So we're gonna assemble that little setup in a minute. The servo, which I did not check the dimensions of before I ordered, is very large, but you know what? It will work for the application. And then we got some lights and a few other components we'll go over here in a minute. But let's start with this, so. This channel should really just be called Things That Are Too Nice To Get Bearings Get Bearings. So it should look something like that. Now this piece bolts to the floor like that and holds all of this in suspension so that as this moves up and down, we can measure how much downforce this is creating of course, we'll be subtracting this, and we'll be probably measuring this without the wing as well, or without the servo rather as well, uh, just to see how it does. So the smoke was actually one of the harder things to do, not because it's actually difficult, but uh, because even though I'm 23, I don't really want my parents to know that I know anything about smoking. Um, so I actually have never bought one of these before, but here it is. And that'll be our smoke generator for uh, putting it into the, into the stream. And then for the other side, uh, I have a regulator and some hose here. And this is a Venturi, uh, or well, this is half a Venturi. This is a full Venturi. And ideally, these will stick together and pull vacuum. Um, I'm gonna put air, compressed air through this and through this and then hook the venturi end to this and hopefully smoke comes out the other side but we'll see so i'm going to get this put together i put a little bit of our uh our lord and savior uh black rtv on here So uh, to take a look at the smoke here, uh, we can add just a little bit here, and works pretty well. 
So that should do pretty well for that. Let's see. Okay. All right, on. Oh, that's purple. Well, I'll fix that later. Anyways, um, smoke. So now. Okay, so that's way too much smoke. <laughs> Turn that like down even a little bit more. Okay, that's better. Okay. That's better. <laughs>So these fans like about 12 volt, uh, but this is a 24 volt power supply and I want them to go faster. So, oh yeah. I'm gonna give a crash course in aerodynamics, but it's mostly fun facts that I think are relevant. Dano Bernoulli, shown here looking pretty happy that he died five years before some stuff went down in France, came up with one of the most important concepts about fluid dynamics. As the speed of a fluid increases, the pressure decreases. The easiest way to show this is with lift. As the air flows around a wing, the air underneath is almost constant. It doesn't speed up or slow down, so its pressure remains the same. The distance across the top of the wing has increased, so the greater distance in the same amount of time means that the speed increases, the pressure drops, and now you have less pressure on the top of the wing and more on the bottom. That's all well and good, but it introduces two new problems. A, how to simulate that, and B, it's almost impossible to simulate on that. There's just too many variables. The other problem is, is when you go fast, things get weird, like David Schwimmer playing Robert Kardashian weird. The problem with it is, is that it's playfully dancing next to the butterfly effect. You can't predict the weather because a butterfly flaps its wings and changes the entire thing. Even with the processing power today, we couldn't predict exactly what's going to happen. Hypothetically, there's 2.5 times 10 to the 25 molecules of air in a cubic meter, and not only does that affect the points around the wing, but look at how far in front of the wing the line is affected. To simulate every point of data for multiple variables is difficult at best. So we still use wind tunnels, we still use basic fluid modeling because that's what we have that's somewhat realistic. The energy wasted as heat in the shockwave must be continuously supplied by the engines. Welcome back to tomorrow. Um, a few updates. Uh, first of all, I went and put supports on all of these and kind of sealed this up a little bit. This was the old rake for the smoke that was sitting in there and there is uh, countless hours of design time and a bunch of materials and it was the hardest thing to print because everything needed supports and it was just generally kind of a pain. Um, there's a lot of time in this. Um, it doesn't work. This took about 30 minutes to design and was a very quick and easy print. Uh, I think this will be better. Um, the intake there, uh, I believe in the original design, it was actually like aluminum. This is cardboard, it works just as well. And I don't even think I'm gonna put in the screws. They're not really necessary for this. So um, that gets installed. And then finally, uh, the air stabilizer, the tubes that go in there. I was gonna 3D print it, but it was a three day print and straws, straws work well. So I'm gonna cut these into two and eighth inch lengths and kind of stack them in there. I don't know if super glue will work. I don't really want to super glue it. I don't, I'd have to find my hot glue gun. Um, I'm not really sure yet on that, but uh, that'll work there. So I'm gonna get those three things put on and uh, then see how she does. to me while editing this that I never explained what I'm doing. 
So I really want a wind tunnel. First of all, this is just a fun project. Uh, I thought it would be cool to build one uh, and just kind of make sure my foundational knowledge of aerodynamics is at least somewhat accurate, and it seems to be so far. The other part is, as I have a project coming up where it's really aerod active aerodynamics on the cheap uh, to see if I can do it on a cost-effective and, and efficient basis. So with that in mind, uh, it's a really good idea to get a test bed to see what devices actually work, will the weight sensors work in an active environment, or are they prone to vibration, and to have some place that I can actually test out some wing profiles and stuff like that. All right, back to the video. All right, let's log some data. Um, this is the wing assembly that we built earlier. Uh, I got it all calibrated, and uh, I'm going to get this installed. Run into an Arduino, and then we're data logging on my laptop, and uh, we can export it to Excel. So let's get this uh, tossed in there. All right, so to start out, we're doing the very basics of data logging. I have the wing set up in there. Um, I don't have anything running right now. The only code I have is this really simple program that uh, loops the servo to adjust the pitch and delays for half a second, gets a good reading off the scale, and then uh, you can export that to Excel and you can map a curve of how much lift it generates or how much downforce it generates. There's 57 steps uh, on the servo and we'll calculate that over to degrees uh, in just a minute. And just like that, it'll continue through its loop uh, for your entire system and data log it over there. And of course, code and everything is in the description below. Um, it's genuinely not uh, nothing fancy here for the moment. So. It's about 103, 104 in here right now. So uh, let's get some air flowing and uh, see what this will do real quick. As we look at this data, uh, tossed it into Excel, I took a uh, third group, it seemed to be the cleanest. Um, and as we look at the first point here, we have 0 0.0675 pounds of downforce uh, at that angle. And then as that angle is down, our lowest point down here is, point zero, is negative 0 0.063112. Um, if we plug that in, we have a delta of about 0.13 pounds, or about 59.26 grams, which uh, I guess proves my point for that it pulls air through it. <laughs> but yeah, it does work as a wind tunnel. This video started out as just a general wondering of how temperature affects aerodynamics. It kind of expanded into how can we control airflow as simply and cheaply as possible. So what's my goal with this? Well, I want to prove that active aerodynamics can be cheap and effective. So I have a race car in mind that is currently running with no aero whatsoever, and it's not this one. And I want to apply a rear wing and a front splitter to it and have it actively controlled. And I'm going to do it in a few stages. So first of all, I'm just going to manually control it to see if it's even possible, which I think it is. And second of all, I want to focus on aerodynamic braking. So obviously the wing would stand up or go to a much higher angle under braking and then flatten out on the straights. And then from there, start building an algorithm that would actually be able to detect and improve over the course of lap times. Another option is to actually build a model of the car, put it in a wind tunnel similar to this and put the active aerodynamics on it like that and at least get a good baseline. There's a lot of room for error in that, but it might be a good start. I'm gonna kinda experiment around with it. But for this first foundations video, this is really what I was trying to get done, and I think there's some interesting things to come out of this. And there's a lot more testing and simulation that can be done about this going forward. So that's, I think, where we're at. Um, I'm excited to tinker with this a little bit more, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, everything like that. And uh, leave a comment down below. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Why do I live in Phoenix? It's so hot. It's September.